bed between the air conditioner and the picture. He oh. said his picture shook. He, the picture shook. And where was the picture, sir? It was uh, to the right, I think, uh, close to the end of the bed. I'm not exactly positive on the exact location of the picture. Can you tell us if it was above this uh, nightstand area? It, it could have been. I. Uh, but to some, it was to the right of. It was on the wall to the right of the bed as you faced the bed, from the. Uh, yes, from it was. Its it was right, area. It was the to the right of the air conditioner, some, uh, somewhere close to the right side of the bed, qu quite possibly above that nightstand. Yes. Okay, the area that I'm gesturing with the uh, light. Yes. Can you tell us where the air conditioner is on this photograph, sir? Can, can you see it? Well, it's there's that uh, bright area to the left upper of the lampshade. That to the left. That appears to be the open door to the bathroom on my screen. And then directly to the right of that, right there, that would be where the air conditioner is. Okay. This is, so where the light is right now, that's the air conditioner? Yes. All right, and what, what is this area in here that I'm gesturing to with the light? That's the open bathroom door. <clears throat> Did you happen to observe whether there was a window in the bathroom? I don't recall if there was a window. Now, did Mr. Kalin tell you what time he heard that crashing sound over his bed, on the wall over his bed? He said about 10.45 PM. And did he, did he point out the picture that he said moved when he heard that, that crashing sound or that thumping sound? He pointed over towards the, the wall, made a gesture as he was talking. <clears throat> At any point, sir, did you search or look through anything in Mr. Kalin's room? Yes, directly to the uh, left side of the bed, which was closest to the bathroom. There was a pile of clothes and a pair of shoes. And what did you do with those? I asked if I could uh, look at them. He says, uh, sure. And what were you looking for? I didn't know. I was just looking at them. The, there was nothing on the clothes. didn't appear to be uh, anything I was concerned with. I looked at the bottom of the soles of the shoes. There didn't appear to be anything on it. I put them back in their original position. What were you looking, what, would, what did you expect to find or what did you think you might find on the bottoms of the shoes? I didn't know, but I was looking to see if there was possibly any blood on the bottom of the shoes or uh, dirt or the sole design. Mm -hmm. Did you ask him whether, uh, Mr. Kalin, whether he had been wearing those shoes and that clothing the night before? Yes, I did. And what was his response? He said, yes, those are the clothes I wore last night. And what did you find on the soles of those shoes? Nothing. And on the clothes? Nothing. OK, after looking through the clothes and the shoes, sir, did you have some further conversation with Mr. Kalin? Yes, well, Mr. Kalin offered, he, he described that when he heard that noise, initially he thought it was an earthquake, but uh, nothing else happened. So he went out to investigate. Did he tell you where he went to investigate? Yes. What did he tell you about that? He went uh, around the north side past the pool, north side of the residence, and uh, walked the same pathway that we had used to approach his, his room. Mm -hmm. And then what? He said he saw a, a limo in the driveway, and then he proceeded uh, towards the area where he was going to investigate, but he didn't uh, describe anything any farther. Okay. <clears throat> now, the area on the wall where he indicated he heard the thumps, could you tell uh, where that the exterior of that point would be on the property? No. And did he tell you how to get to that point on the exterior part of the property? No, he didn't. So after he told you that he'd gone out to investigate the thumps and got into the driveway and seen the limo driver, did he tell you where he went after that point? I don't recall that he did, no. What happened next? 
I asked Mr. Kalin if he would uh, come with me, and we exited his room. And I looked towards the main house, and I saw there was an uh, open door, the rear uh, off the patio. Can you tell us, can you show us, sir, the path that you took on the diagram marked People 66 in the company of Mr. Kalin? Yes. We exited Mr. Kalin's room. We walked up these stairs, went towards the main house, probably these stairs right here. There's a door right here that was uh, partially open. I believe it had a screen on it also. We walked, walked into that door. Uh, it led into a bar area uh, just to the left of a billiard table that you stepped down into. And were the other, where were the other detectives? I didn't know. Uh, I had not seen this door open prior, so I assumed that they were inside the residence. And the door, was it stand, that rear door, was it standing open when you went in with Mr. Kalin? Yes. Did you ask for his assistance in fi figuring out how to get into the house, or was that obvious to you? I might have, but I noticed the door. Mr. Kalin could have, could have led me there. I'm not positive which way that went. So you walked in through the rear door? Yes. And that was with Mr. Kalin? Yes. And what did happen next after you entered the house? When I first walked in, I noticed this area you stepped down where there's a large billiard table, and then directly in front of where we came in, there is a, uh, a bar area where there's four or five bar stools. And I asked Mr. Kalin to sit in one of those stools and relax and somebody talked to him in a minute. Go ahead, have a seat. Now, at that point, had you asked Mr. Kalin uh, where Mr. Simpson was or where he could be found? I didn't ask him any questions about that any, any further. Did he volunteer any information as to where the defendant was? No. Did you have any idea at that point whether the defendant was home or out of town or what his whereabouts were? No. Did you have any idea of where the, what time the defendant uh, had come or gone from his residence that night? No. <clears throat> and did you ever obtain uh, an answer to the initial question you asked Mr. Kalin about whether the Bronco, the white Bronco, belonged to Mr. Simpson? I believe he said that's the vehicle he drives. And was that in response to your question initially posed? Yes. Or was that later conversation? That was initially. <clears throat> After you got, uh, you put Cato, you got to Cato to the uh, bar area, what happened next? I left him at that location and I tried to find where the detect other three detectives had walked to. Did you find them? I walked uh, towards the front door. There was a, um, a hallway type area. And as I walked past there, I, there was an open doorway, and I saw all three detectives in the kitchen area. Okay. So, did you walk? Then you did you walk through the kitchen area or through the living room area? I think it's the living room area that there's a hallway that ac accesses uh, the kitchen through a small doorway that you'd have to turn left, but the hallway goes somewhat directly towards the front door. Mm -hmm.
Let's photograph, Your Honor, be people's 110, 111. And I apologize for not showing you these photographs ahead of time so you could orient yourself, but do you recognize what's shown in people's 111? Yes, I do. Okay. Can you tell us uh, what's shown in this photograph? Yes, just off center in the upper uh, left corner area, you'll see an open door. That's the rear door I was speaking of coming from the patio area. <clears throat> There's several uh, framed photographs you can see to the right of that doorway. That would be leading down into the billiard area. There's a large picture directly to the left of that. I believe that was a large Neiman that was at the uh, south wall of the billiard room. The bar area is where all the chairs are to the right. Uh, right corner of this and if you walk directly past that bar area going to the right of the picture you'd be going down the hallway that would uh, let you see the doorway that leads into the kitchen. Okay. If you would direct the light I'm going to be shining on the screen now. Can you see the light? Yes. All right. Tell me where to go. Where's the bar area here? Straight up. Right there, there's this, the bar stools. It was, uh, there are bar stools that, that sit at a normal level of a chair, not an elevated bar stool. Okay. And is that the bar area that you brought Mr. Kalin into? Yes. Okay, and then over here, is this, this is the door you were speaking of that you two entered through? Yes. And after you put him uh, here, at the, seated him at the bar here, where did you go? Directly, use your pointer and go directly to the right. Past. The other side of that wall that you're now touching would be the hallway that leads to the uh, north side of the kitchen. And to the front door area? Yes. any longer? Um, I was going to, but I don't no, have to. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. It, it's blocking your view, is it? No, it's okay. Go ahead. I was just wondering if you weren't going to use it anymore, let's take it down. But if you plan to use it again, be my guest. I don't know how far I'm going to get. That's why, I, to save time, I was leaving it there, but I will use yeah, it again. No. People's uh, 112. People's 112. <laughs> Showing you People's 112, sir. Do you recognize what uh, location that is? Yes, that's the interior of the front door that faces uh, west. Did you exit through that door, sir, when you uh, indicated to us earlier that you went down the hallway towards the front door? Yes. That's the one? Yes. And at that point, you, you had seen that the other three detectives were in the kitchen. Yes. Could you see what they were doing in there? I believe one detective was on the phone, one, that detective not being Van Adder. Uh, I believe Phillips was on the phone, but I can't be positive about that. Did you have any conversation with Detective Phillips or Detective Lang before leaving the front door? No. What was the... You spoke to Detective... Uh, you were with Detective Phillips, Lang, and Van Adder at the point that you first went to uh, Mr. Kalin's room. I believe you testified earlier. Is that correct? Yes. And was that the uh, last time that you spoke to them or you were with them before you went out the front door? Did you have any further conversation with them before leaving Cato in the bar and going out the front door? Yes, I made a comment to uh, Detective Van Adder. 
And what was that comment, sir? I said, Phil, would you talk to this guy at the bar? And other than that, did you have any conversation uh, with Detective Van Adder, Detective Lang, or Detective Phillips? No, not at that time. So after that remark to Detective, to Detective Van Adder, you went out the front door? Yes. And for what purpose did you do that? I was trying to orient myself from where this uh, the south wall of Cato's bedroom could be located on the property. But you indicated earlier, sir, that uh, when you looked inside the uh, rear cargo area of the Bronco, you described for us a shovel and a piece of plastic. Do you recall that, sir? Yes, ma'am. You recall that uh, photograph you've earlier described for us? Yes, I do. And that shovel? Yeah, you know, I have here, right in my life, a lot of people's next in order. The, uh, the people's form. 113. 113. It's wrapped in a paper bag. I'd like to uh, unseal it, if I could, Your Honor, and have the witness identify it. You want to you do it or not? Go ahead. I'm just going to cut through. It appears to be <clears throat> currently sealed with tape with an analyzed evidence uh, marker on it, SID marker on it. I believe it's been examined. For the record, I'm cutting through the seal and the tape. <coughs> I think rather than take it completely out, I'm just going to tear this so that it can be seen. Tell us, sir, if you recognize what, what I'm showing you here, People's 113? Yes. And what is it? That looks like the shovel that I saw in the rear cargo area of the Bronco. Do you want to hold it up so the jury can see it, sir? <coughs> Get a look at it. Thank you. And now you also described a piece of plastic that you saw in the pocket on the passenger side of the cargo area? Yes, ma'am. In the photograph that's now on the screen from Peoples 109, you see a white object underneath the uh, handle of the shovel, sir? Yes, I do. And what was that? I, I do not know. Do you recall seeing it there, though? I was looking from that side of the vehicle, so I might not have even seen that white object. It might have been out of my view. I have here a box that, uh... All right, you want to mark the box and contents, 114? Yes, Your Honor. All right.
I'm showing you the uh, box that's now been marked people's 114. Can I allow you to uh, cut it and break the seal? For the record, Your Honor, the, the box is currently uh, taped and there's a LAPD sealed evidence tag um, that is unbroken over the top of it. If you could please go ahead, cut it, and describe the act, your actions as you do so, sir. I'm cutting the tape on both ends of the box. I'm now cutting the center of the tape that's going over the analyzed evidence seal. Opening the box, and I <clears throat> there is a, a brown paper bag with an LA evidence seal. And is there a number on it? Number 62, and another one, number photo 64, I, I'm sorry, and photo 62. Those are photo ID numbers, sir? Yes, and there's an item, I believe, 91, and an item 93. Now, you described to us. Uh, some plastic that you saw, sir? Yes. Can you, this uh, item that has the number, item number 93 on it, photo number 64 on it, is it currently sealed? Yes, it is. Could LAPD you, sealed evidence. Could you please cut the seal? Yes. Cutting the seal on the package. I'm opening the package and removing a folded piece of heavy gauge plastic. Could you please unfold the plastic, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. It appears to be a bag that's uh, approximately three foot by four or five feet. And is that the plastic that you recall seeing in the rear cargo area? Yes, it is. And was it folded up at the time you saw it, sir? Yes, it was. All right, for the record, Detective Firm is now uh, refolded the plastic place on top of the box. There's another uh, bag inside this box, and I'm going to bring it over to you. Is it currently sealed? Yes, it is. <clears throat> Could you please cut the seal? Describe your actions as you do so. I'm cutting the seal on uh, item number 91, unfolding the paper bag, and removing a white towel. Does that look similar to the object depicted in people's photograph number uh, 109? Yes. <clears throat> Would you please replace the ta uh, hold the towel up, show the jury? Thank you. Put it back in the bag. And lastly, Your Honor, I have an item here. I'd like to mark People's 115. All right, People's 115. It's currently uh, wrapped up in uh, brown paper, and it, and it appears to be sealed. And it bears the uh, DR number 94087431. Sir, is that the, if you know, is that the same number that you can see on the bag that you've just uh, replaced the towel back into? Yes, it's the same DR number. And is that the same DR number that you see on the bag that you removed the plastic from? Yes, it is. And are you familiar with what that means, what's the DR number? Yes. And what is that? That's the number that's assigned to the victim of any crime or a report number. And so are all items uh, then booked to that same number in that case? Yes. And on the package that we now have that we marked, People's 115, you see that same number? Yes, I do. Could you please open that package, sir? Mm -hmm. 
the record, please. I'm cutting the brown tape on the opposite side of the evidence tag, unrolling the brown paper. There is a, uh, another white paper also. Uh, it has LAPD analyzed evidence seals on it with the DR 94081731. Cutting through those seals. Here. Yes. What is it? That's the piece of wood that I found to the uh, left of the right front tire of the Bronco that was lying on the parkway. People's exhibit number 107. Can you look at your monitor, sir? Yes. Do you see the item that you've just uh, unwrapped that we've marked as People's 115 in this photograph? I do. And where is it? It is directly to the left of the right front tire of the Bronco. Can you please uh, hold it up for the jury and tell us if there's it, it any difference in its appearance today than you, uh, than in the way you found it when you saw it on June the 13th? The, uh, yes, there's a uh, piece of plastic over an exposed nail, and the white paint seems to be soiled with fingerprint powder. And the wood uh, probably is just slightly less fresh appearing than it was the day I observed it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to conclude for the morning session. Please remember my admonition to you. Don't discuss the case amongst yourselves. Don't form any opinions about the case. Don't conduct any deliberations till the matter has been submitted to you for your decision. Also, do not allow anybody to communicate with you regarding the case. Um, we will see you Monday morning, 9 a.m., all right? I'd like to see the, I'd like the attorneys to remain until uh, after we have excused the jury. I'd like to talk to you about some discovery and other matters. All right, Detective Furman, you may step down. You're ordered to return Monday morning, 9 a.m. Thank, right. Thank you, sir.